First thing I want you to know, no man is perfect. That word we use to show that they have reached a level of completeness where they have no faults. They have no sort of sin within them. I want to say to you that no man today has reached that level. And I don't care who the individual is. We all have faults. We all are going to have faults. Somebody might reach a level that somebody, you know, observed them and said, well, I've never seen this person do this or do that. But here's not what you don't do. There's something about you which is messed up. Amen, everybody? Amen. We have folks who find it so easy to come down hard on somebody who has messed up publicly because we have to understand, you know, we have people who messed up publicly or sin, and the sin is in the public side. And then those who see it have a tendency to come with their pitchforks and getting their torches ready to burn the person at the stake. And one of the very common statements that is used, them should I know better. It's true. But then, when we take ourselves out of the picture, the Bible tells us that if we judge ourselves, then no man would need to judge us. Jesus, as a matter of fact, said that we need to pick the beam out of our eyes first. And he made a statement to say that, listen, what you're going to be looking at with the other person, notice, you know, it's a moth. That is in the person's eyes, something small. But you have a beam, a beam like a wall in your eye. But yet you want to say you have that surgical precision to see something as small as a moth in somebody's eye. Jesus said, remove the beam out of your eye so that you're able to make a proper judgment. Everybody with me? So this is where it becomes difficult when we have persons who act as if They've never done anything wrong. We've seen it many times in church. Growing up in church, I've seen that the elders would have made the young people feel like they're the worst set of people in the world. And young people want to do nothing more than sin and they're not sober and they don't have any God. I've experienced it myself. There's some folks who, what they have done, when people sin, you realize that it's not that you're sinning against God. But they are upset that you did something that disgraces them. Are you with me, everybody? So the offense no more becomes what you did against God. But they are more upset with that you're being disgraced on the ministry and on the church. Are you with me, everybody? And so this is what happens with the Pharisees when Jesus was on earth. Have you noticed them? When Jesus was arguing with them, he would refer to them as being hypocrites. Because they were not keeping the law on the basis that they love God. But they were keeping the law in a hypocritical way. Because they were looked upon as being holy, as being righteous, as being better. No, none of you. I don't care how any of you energetic. And I don't care any of you love God. None of you in this building are none of you that I know of. Could old praise brother David. <laughs> I don't care who write songs and how great you write songs. But when you look at the book of Psalms and the amount of Psalms that David wrote. When you look at David's leadership mentality and how he established Israel. The Bible described him as the greatest king that have ever reigned. As a matter of fact, when kings came after him, they said that he led after the order of who? David, his father, because of the example that David set. The Bible described David as a man after God's own heart. Everybody here with me? But then, when we analyze David's life, we realize that David was also a murderer and an adulterer. Everybody still with me? 
as perfect as it might have been that he, his ministry seemed. David committed adultery, told lies, tried to cover it up, tried to give the poor man jacket. Mm -hmm. But we see where as much as he was good, if it's even one fault he had, as great as David was, he was humble. As great as Peter was, he was humble. So these men exhibited some qualities that amidst the faults, they made up for them with the quality of their character, with the quality of life that they lived. Are you with me, everybody? First Peter chapter 2 and verse 16. And I want to bring out to you tonight, I, I, I normally said, you know, that, you see, if we were still under the law, churches would be packed every service time. You would always have offering being thrown, tithes being thrown, and you would have some people, my God, when it's time for worship, you'd have some of the best worship sessions. And it's not necessary that people would be doing it from a pure heart. But it would be happening, Why? Because you're under the law. So the thing now is. Because we know. That all of us have faults. Does it mean. That we should just live. And say well. We can't do better. A summer stay. Me short temper. Everybody knows say. Me love course. Everybody knows say. If you ramp with me. Me have a malice you. Is it that we're saying that because perfection is an ongoing process, it means that you should live a life of sin? Let's hear what the Apostle Peter has to say. As free and not using liberty as a cloak of malice, but as servants of God. Listen, we have freedom in Christ. Through the blood of Jesus which has cleansed us and has made us right, righteous, and put us in a state of getting and achieving holiness. However, we should not use this opportunity to cover up and do we look at sins and do we look at mess. And at the end of the day, we can just say at the end of the day, the blood of Jesus cleanses me uh, there's a fountain filled with blood John from Emmanuel's vein watch this sin has punch if we not sin who are going go there praise God that's not what the song is saying you get it wrong Peter is saying let us not use freedom because we're no more under the law so the law said that you had to physically Murder somebody with a gun, a knife, a stone in order to be a murderer. But many of us don't realize that grace is even a bit stricter than under the law. Why? Because no, you still cannot physically kill somebody and still that be a murderer. But the Lord amplified, modified, and said, if you just simply hate your brother, and the Bible describes you as being a murderer. So for those who believe that tonight, Pastor, just make me feel good. Because Pastor show me, say, Adam did a fault. Show me, say, Moses did pack a fault. My God, even Peter. So if them can't do so much wrongs and still achieve good, then, then me can do it too. Me can still live on me want. Me can do a market and be somebody at the market. When me go to work, me want a different person. When me go to my home, me want a different person. When me come to church, me want a different person. That's not what pastor is teaching. Amen. Pastor wants us to understand that we have faults. Pastor have faults. But I cannot use that as a justification. To continue in sin. Let's move on. Watch this. Let's go to the book of Romans. Chapter number 6. And reading from verse 15. And I love how the apostle Paul. Address the situation here. Reading verse 15 and 16. 
Notice the question. It's a question. What then? Shall we sin? Because we are not under the law. But under grace. God forbid. We shall not say. Because we don't have to keep the Sabbath day. Anymore. That no. We you know, are removed from burning incense. And, and, and making the sacrifices with lambs and bullocks. That no, we are just free to do as we want. We find it now that, you know, because we are not under the law and the Sabbath thing is not as strict as it was, we find now that people go to work every single day and wash on Sunday. Am I talking to the church? In church, quiet a while, I'm going to do. Every single day, people do what they have to do. But Sunday become your laundry day. Without realizing that Sunday is your Sabbath. Am I talking to the church? The reality is God gives us privilege. And grace is a privilege. Let's think about it. Let's look at how many times all of us sin. And God doesn't kill us. Let's look at how many times many of us get mercy. Some of us know that you know live no life. But yet you are going to taxi and come out the same way, unscathed. And other people, dead. And they meet in one less accident than you. You know, saying I live no life. Can run off a road and kill somebody. People could go rape some people. And you know, I live no life. Think about it. You have a privilege. But can I tell you? There's coming a day when your account is going to run out of credit. Am I talking to the church? One day you're going to ring heaven and you're here. I'm sorry. You have no credit left. Because you use up all of your credit. Since there's a reason why we have to show love, you know. Showing love, as what Paul said, it is a story of love. There's a reason why we have to show mercy and forgive. Why? Because all of this is us storing up missionary for yourself because there's gonna come a day when you ever drop down in the valley of the shadow of death and you need somebody to pull you out. But then, because your account in arrears, I'm not talking to the church. Because your account not in a good standing. You don't know if so you go to a bank now. I want to get a loan. When I think of them, I'm going to them go check your credit history. Am I talking to the church? Find out how many different places you owe. And see how much you can manage. And not only that, but to see if you're a bad creditor. Am I talking to the church? Sometimes, you know, saints, it's not that we're right, you know. It's not that we reach our state of righteousness, you know. But guess what happened? There's somebody who did show some kindness last week. Oh God, can I talk to the church? And it's because of that which you've done last week. It gives you some grace this week. Am I talking to the church? So what we sow, that is what we will reap. So how can we want to be forgiven by God, but we cannot forgive our brother? Am I talking to the church? Notice the price. The price said, forgive us of our debt. And we what? So if you don't forgive, then the reality is you cannot be forgiven. Weakness does not mean that we have to live in it. All of us has faults. But let us strive to perfection. God bless you tonight. In Jesus' name.